if you go back, well, what it must be, 20, 30 years, you know, um, it was a good, a good venue, but it could have been better. And some of us wanted to enhance it. Uh, but the problem was you had court on two days a week. And it was a, it was a difficult situation. The court paid the most money, really. They kept the place going in one sense. And so the community, uh, they had to kind of fit in around, and the courts fit, fitted around the community. It was, uh, you had to decide what you wanted that hall to be used for. People aren't, aren't happy with second best these yeah. days. Yeah. They want, they want a, a good quality. Definitely. Thing, you know. So if you can get businesses involved, if you can get sponsorship, if you can get money from lottery grants, heritage yeah. funds, yeah. anything you like, you know. To make it to that space, it, yeah. That, that space. The problem with the building from a magistrate's court was that there was no rooms where solicitors could interview the clients in privacy. There was no places where witnesses could be kept away from the people who were being charged and the offenders. So it, it wasn't a satisfactory set I, I suppose if you had changed it like that, then you'd have to stop all the other uses. Well, that was the problem. Yeah. Um, from a cost-effective thing for the council, we was probably their regular income. But f f if we'd have made it into a court, which we did ask the council to investigate one time, which was, you would have had to stop everything else. Yeah, so we and it, it was, uh, we could understand it's a community building, mm. it's got to be for the community. Well, yes, it was still a magistrate's court when, when we first approached the council about using uh, the town hall as a, as a live music venue. We approached the council, they agreed, we went up and had a look. We had basically to use the existing space in the best way that we could. Each time we used the town hall, we had to deconstruct it as a magistrate's court. So we had to take everything out and basically create this community music space. Yeah. Um, we had lighting rigs in there, lighting engineers. So basically we turned it into this regular concert venue for dancing because it, the beauty of that building as well, it's got a fantastic run floor which is perfect for dancers. We, we, we put on concerts over an 11 year period from 1999 and our last one was, was Christmas 2010 at the Town Hall. So we had 11 years of concerts and also six festivals, weekend festivals. So as well as concerts, we also ran workshops there as well. We got funding through um, the Arts Council for three years. We got funding through the Lottery, through Derbyshire County Council and the, obviously um, the local IP council and many local businesses also supported because they could see the benefit to the town. Glossop has such a, a fantastic music scene in terms of s small venues, a lot of interest, a lot of people have moved out from the cities to live in, in Glossop and, and still like us, this is why we set up the lift, want to sort of keep that connection with the live music scene of a, of, of a city area. Um, so Glossop has a, a thriving music scene, but what it doesn't have is a good venue like the Town Hall was for us, a 200-250 capacity venue. The town desperately needs that. Again, we, we knew from the support we got from local businesses that um, a venue like this was, was important for the town. It, it gave a buzz to the town, it brought more people into the town. The, the Town Hall, as a, as a major venue, brings in the artists that give young people who network, possibly wouldn't come to the concerts, but an opportunity to share in, if you like, the music of those countries. For example, we, we had Congolese musicians doing guitar workshops at, at the local Glossopdale school, um, and then perform a concert in the evening. 